<clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about this KS47 build. Um, I know that uh, I've been reading a little bit or a lot actually about the some of the issues people are having or the uh, some of the misinformation or uh, lack of clarity on some of these things. So uh, just going to kind of what I did with this uh, this build from the uh, the PSA. KS47, and just as a disclaimer, I'm not gonna not bashing anything that that uh, Palmetto does. Great guys, great service. Um, just uh, just tried to gonna go into what a uh, little bit of a workaround that I did for the uh, getting this thing to actually uh, function properly with a mil spec upper. So um, we'll go in. You know, if you've ever uh, if you're trying to build one of these or you've purchased a lower in the, <clears throat> the last few months. Um, if you like me, you watch the videos on YouTube about you know, interchangeable with any 762 mil spec upper and without thinking too much about it, um, you know, I was thinking, well, cool, you know, 762 upper, I, I built a 762 pistol, um, you know, for off of a, you know, assembled upper that I bought from PSA and, I uh, you know, had had some issues with uh, those proprietary mags, you know, some feed issues and stuff. So then they're expensive and I'd really unify and be able to use my, my AK-47 mags with this. So when they came out with their KS-47 lower and the way that I understood it originally without, without reading the uh, print on the advertisement was, you know, it would work uh, with any mil spec upper, which is if anybody who's purchased one of these strip lowers has soon realized that's not the case. Um, the AK-47 magazine physically will not fit into a AR, a standard uh, AR-15 upper. Um, so I don't, I'm not exactly sure what they mean when they say um, yeah, mil spec other than the takedown pin center to center distance being the same um, but as a purchase part uh, if you go out and buy a you know, stripped upper for a AR-15 it will not fit so um, once I realized this and then went back and actually read uh, what they said on the uh, advertisement for the KS-47 <clears throat> that you have, you basically have to buy their KS-47 upper, which is different than their PA or PS-47, whatever it was that I bought originally. Um, so anyways, I went to go buy a KS-47 upper, a stripped upper, because uh, I already had all the other components that I thought, and then soon realized that they were not available or not available yet. You can buy an assembled upper for Six hundred and twenty dollars, uh, which I was not in the mood to spend since I've already this budget build has already went way over budget. So this is the seven six two pistol upper uh, that I originally bought. Well, the uh, handguard barrel, gas block, all that stuff. And then, so what I did was I figured out a way to modify a upper receiver to accept the AK-47 magazines. Um, so basically, if you look in here, machined this area out on both sides and um, yeah, left not a lot of material there. So I actually I machined these parts here to in some 440 hardware, tapped and threaded into the upper to really to uh, and just take up the space and add a little more structural stability back to the upper. Um, <clears throat> and it functioned fine without the uh, uh, these guys being on there. Uh, but it was a little weak and it looked kind of funny being able to see the, the magazine uh, inside the upper receiver. And as you can see, this is just a plain Jane upper receiver, no forward assist, no dust cover. Um, a friend of mine hooked me up with this. Uh, he had one laying around and it actually worked out uh, for the best because after going through it, um, 
Ford Assist will be fine. Uh, the dust cover does present some problems in where the, the mounts come in. Uh, Mike, I've got another, since I've got this thing functioning and working good, I'll probably take my uh, the other upper that I have and machine it out and see how good it does as well. Um, so I kind of, so it, well anyways, once I got that work, worked out and put together, Also see here, so the magazine fits in there just fine. Um, once I got that worked out, I was super stoked, but then I soon realized that there's also an issue uh, with the bolt carrier. The tabs on top of the, the magazine sit too high inside the upper receiver to clear the bolt carrier. So the next thing I had to do was machine out the bolt carrier. So, see here, see the shiny parts, obviously material removed. Uh, basically all I had to do here is take a quarter inch ball nose uh, from basically this top surface here to the tangent point of the ball nose. It was about 200 thousandths, I think it worked out. It was around a little over a sixteenth uh, depth from the original surface um, and then it left uh, these edges right here kind of sharp so I went back over those and it was just a flat end mill and uh, flattened them out cleaned it up a little bit and it works um, so <coughs> I uh, fired this thing about uh, put about 20 rounds to it everything seems to be working fine and I don't have any more money in it uh, than I would have in the first place. Uh, and it's and it's functioning. I don't have to wait for them to come out with the stripped uppers um, to assemble this thing. Uh, so I'm going to kind of go into show you guys some of the details on this thing. So you can see here with this guy assembled. Areas in black, obviously untouched. You can see these areas that are shinier. Those are the areas that I machined out. You can see the magazine clears. And this is just basically me redesign, redesign my redesign of the uh, KS47 lower, uh, which I'd been working on for a while, but wasn't exactly sure without making a bunch of prototypes exactly uh, where this uh, the uh, this roll pin for the magazine needed to be and whatnot, so I decided to go ahead and buy the uh, PSA's version. Um, so now I don't know if I'll spend the time and make this guy or not. Maybe I will. Um, so if we open up the uh, the upper receiver here, you can just see a little bit a little clearer than with. Uh, the real version. This is just a SolidWorks part file. You can see here, machined out all this in here. <clears throat> Basically this front surface, and this is a guess initially, it could probably be refined a little bit more to make it a little bit smaller. Um, but the, basically the cut comes in tangent to this front surface, right here in the front of the receiver. Uh, put these 440 screws and uh, tapped holes in here uh, to hold those covers on. Um, and let's see. And here, if we go look at the bolt carrier, you kind of see maybe that material was removed there. Kind of pop up some pictures real quick of. drawings for the dimensions of this guy. Alright, so right here, this is just showing the dimensions of what I did. Um, I don't have the dimensions of the 440 tapped 
uh, screws in there because if I do another one, I'll probably change it. It wasn't the best location. I'm not going to go into why, but sitting here, basically three eighths of an inch from the base up, it's 150 thousandths radius. I mean, you could do, if you're doing this, you could do this, drill out the corners and cut it with a bandsaw. There's nothing precision about it, uh, about two and five eighths uh, from that surface there. And if you're indicating off of the front takedown pin, it's about 339 thousandths to that surface. Um, and yeah, that's that. And here is the front view detail of the bolt carrier modification. You can see I just drew that quarter inch diameter circle to represent the ball nose. <coughs> and if you're indicating off center, that's about 320 thousandths or the ball nose basically uh, tangent to that surface there. And from uh, that top surface, it's uh, 200 thousandths down uh, to there to get it to clear. I will, uh, one quick disclaimer, uh, this doesn't quite work with the P mags. The P mags are a little bit bulkier. Uh, I got it to first fit check with the uh, steel mags. It worked fine. Pulled it off the machine, put it together to work. When I went to put a P mag in there, it's still a little tight. So to get it to function with a P mag, you probably need to go about another 30 thousandths or so. But um, I prefer the, the steel AK mags anyways. So I'll probably just leave it alone. Um, so, anyways this thing together right quick and show you how it works <clears throat> okay so here's the uh, KS 47 pistol assembled put together uh, you can see the this is just the first guess when I did these uh, covers on this guy they're not quite flush with the lower receiver but you know it's just kind of a secondary thing maybe go back and I'll mill them down a little bit to uh, get them flush maybe do uh, get them anodized do a little engraving on them or something um but anyways if you look down here in the uh mag well see all the shiny surfaces down there that's basically all the material that i had to remove between the upper uh, receiver and the bolt carrier to get it to accept the ak mags See it fits in there just fine. And there's no bolt hold open on the, this magazine, so I can't just tell it. I gotta hold it with one hand with the camera and one on the charging handle. But you can maybe see a little bit, it clears, cycles fine. Um, Anyway, just wanted to put this video out there. Uh, like I said, it's not not bashing PSA by any means. It's just a, I've been working on this thing for uh, about a year now. Between the proprietary mags for the standard uh, mil spec lowers and had a lot of issues with that. Got fed up with it to the point I was almost ready to just get rid of it. And then uh, they came out with these uh, KS47 lowers. Got super excited. Uh, it just didn't take the time myself to uh, to read the advertisement about what it actually functioned with uh, versus uh, just uh, listening to the uh, YouTube videos that were out there. Um, so anyways, um, not knocking them, just a little way around if somebody out there is in the same position I'm in with, you know, having one of these and you're wanting to run the, the uh, AK mags, which... Uh, like I said, I've only got about 20 rounds through it, but had zero failure to feed issues on that. And, and prior to that, we were, it was like every other round, I was, it was some kind of issue. So um, we'll do a more long term test, maybe after I get about 500 rounds through this thing. I don't have a, any major concerns over the structural integrity of the upper. Um, did remove quite a bit of material, but we do have those covers back on there that do offer a little more support. And there's not a lot of stress in the upper uh, itself anyway, so uh, especially in that region. So anyways, uh, just thought I'd share this with you guys. You know, comment below if you got any questions. I'll try to get back with you um, on more details and uh, probably do a follow-up video if you have any issues and whatnot. So thanks for watching.